Good morning, Kathy. It's Lisa, and it's uh, morning time in my garden, and I thought I would take you on a tour. So, um, the first rose this morning is Baron Prévot, and I bought her because she is so fragrant, um, but you can see the, um, the flowers are just luscious too. So she smells as good as she looks. Um, this one's not blooming yet. This is Red Cascade. Oops, focus. There we go. And um, I put one of my garden sprites there, hidden in the leaves. Um, but she's a miniature climbing rose um, and blooms a real Christmas red. Um, tiny, tiny little flowers. But as you can see, um, she's a big plant, so she's a lot of fun. Likes the heat. Um, I have hollyhocks, and I haven't decided where to put them yet, so they are resting. Um, this is another one I haven't decided um, where to put it. It's it's uh, Wyacon. Um, they call it blue creosote, um, but it's the, the the growth habit is very different. Um, and I just absolutely love it at the Desert Museum, so I had to get a specimen. This is uh, a rose from Rose Cabot's house, and um, I'm hoping to give this one away uh, this year. So it's just a pink miniature rose, but obviously very healthy. Um, let's see. Chiltepine, sweet potato vine, um, geraniums, nasturtiums, verbena. I, I like to get hot colors and put them in this corner. And these poor chairs are falling apart, but they're so picturesque. Uh, I keep them in the garden. Um, got some mint growing. Um, and this was kind of a happy accident. This is a uh, um, called Corsican Mint, I think, and it's probably incredibly invasive, um, but I love the way it's grown through this old um, iron um, patio chair, and um, you can see this is the pot it's coming from, and I've had some fun with the pot um, since there are fairies running amok in the garden. The little um, bug and there she is, a little snail. Um, we're done locally um, up in Oracle at Triangle L Ranch. So I also have my fairy area here too. Um, I have some glittery branches behind my castle now, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's been joined by a little chapel. And I'm soaking the ground here um, because there's a gnome that wants to set up a household here. And uh, so he, he has a little gate around his house and, uh, and an arbor there. So, um, let's see. This is Tombstone Rose uh, that I planted about 15 years ago. And she's quite large and beautiful. She's past flowering now, so um, her, her flowers will get a little tired. Um, this is a real similar plant called Fortuniana. In fact, it's often sold as the tombstone rose, and um, but it will get big too. This has only been in my yard for two years. So um, over here, and if you hear something mechanical, it's probably on this little silly windmill um, blowing in the wind. Um, but it adds a nice noise to the yard. Um, this area just really gelled this year. Um, once we put the, the windmill in, um, there's some really big climbing roses that I had over here. Um, and next year I'll train them up the windmill. Um, but for now, they're just sort of cavorting around it. Oh, there's the, there's the window. The wind's picking up for the day. And if you see 
stuff falling because of this olive tree, um, which is also flowering and dropping all kinds of pollen. So anyway, back to these. Um, this is a fairly new rose in my garden. Um, this is um, Bourbon Queen, and uh, she's a actually a kind of a pre-Victorian rose, um, and she'll only bloom once. Um, but you can see she gets these perfectly cupped, tiny. Here's my hand for scale. Tiny little. Um, delicious pink flowers and she smells really good too um, this is kind of an oddball I got this one for free by ordering from one of the mail order companies called indigo and I think this is the first time it's bloomed for me but it's it's a real pretty kind of bluish pink uh, rose this is a rose called Elizabeth Bowers that a friend of mine hybridized um, Judy is, um, oh, Judy, don't look at the aphids, sorry. Um, Judy's been hybridizing roses that do well in the heat. And uh, this is the, one of the commercial, the, the roses that's made into commercial um, realm. And uh, so you can buy it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a real, another real pretty pink. This, the white rose that's here, is actually grows. She starts over here, and this is climbing Clotilde Super. And yeah, see the base of her plant isn't really very interesting, but what's what's wonderful is how long her canes get and how uh, beautifully fragrant the little white flowers are. Um, do a close-up here. Um, they're not large, um, but she's very fragrant. Uh, she's another old rose. This one is not an old rose. Um, this is Liv Tyler, named after the movie star. And it's a David Austin rose. I'm trying to get focus here. It's a David Austin rose. I think maybe because it's dark it won't focus. Um, which is a modern rose, bred to look old-fashioned, but have sort of more modern color combinations also. I'll do a close-up of one that hasn't opened yet. So she's quite lovely too, and also very fragrant. Um, this rose is a mystery rose, kind of. I think I've identified it, focus, as Schaler's Provence. And uh, which means it's um, there. There we go. Um, she's related to the Bourbon Queen earlier um, that that we looked at earlier, and, and, and in fact, the flowers are pretty similar. Um, but if it is indeed Shaler's Provence, it was in um, Thomas Jefferson's garden at uh, Monticello. And, oh, he's blooming this morning. Um, this is, look at this color. This is another ancient rose. This is Cardinal Richelieu. And uh, there's a tradition of naming uh, very dark roses after men. Um, and this is one of the darkest of the old roses. Um, and uh, it's just this really beautiful um, true purple color. So the other rose that's blooming on the windmill now is a Wind Dreams, or Wind Chimes, excuse me, and that's the one with the peachy flowers. Um, and she is just beginning to bloom, but you can see, here I'll back up, focus, focus. She is a monster, so this is going to be fun. Okay, hammock. Okay, now this, she's just beginning to bloom too. This is Ballerina. Um, she's from the 1930s and kind of a precursor to today's miniature roses, but you can see she just blooms these enormous clusters of these delicate pink 
um, five petaled flowers. So um, she's going to be very pretty. So um, that's it for the windmill area. One, one last look. And over here I have the pergola. And this area hasn't quite worked as I hoped. Um, the really big pink rose, I've had to cut back a little. Um, she's gotten um, crown gall, and that's kind of making her less vigorous. So, But for now, she's happy and blooming, just not as big as she used to be. Um, this is a real sweet rose. This is Darla's Enigma, which I just love the name. The pink is pollen from the olive tree. On the, I mean, sorry, the yellow on the, on the leaves is pollen. Um, the white, unfortunately, is aphids and white flies. I need to wash her off. So, but this is Darla's Enigma, and you can see it's another one that blooms in great clusters. So this one's going to be real pretty um, very soon. Focus, focus. Okay, here we go. Um, just have a couple blooms on this one. Oh, three. Three blooms on this one. This is another ancient rose. Um, you can see another peachy, peachy rose. This is a rose that came from China um, in the late 18th century, and it's named for the um, person who brought it from China to uh, Europe. Um, and some call him a thief. His name was Robert Fortune. He's also the person who stole tea from China and brought it to India so that the British wouldn't have to pay Chinese taxes on tea plants. So he's the one that started the Royal India Company. I'm sorry this one isn't blooming because this is, uh, this is one of my joys. Um, this is, let's look at the tag. It's a new one, wind chimes. This is wind chimes, okay. Um, but it's another one that blooms um, five petal roses that are absolutely delicious. So this is the big pink rose and um, her name, let's see, can we focus here? Her name is Madame Isaac Perer and she dates to Victorian times. She only blooms now. She'll only bloom um, in the spring, um, but wonderful color and real intense fragrance. She's just delightful. Um, okay, this one's blooming for the first time. This is um, Lady Hillingdon, which is a 1930s rose, a China rose that does very well in the heat and has this kind of lemony fragrance that's that's very delightful and different from other roses. Uh, this is a new rose. This is Garten Director Otto Nine, um, which is a polyantha rose from the 30s, just like Valerina. Um, but this one has more petals, obviously, and I just, I love the color of this. And just for scale, that's, that's how tiny they are. They're just beautiful. Okay. Oh, look at you. Look at you. This is Bukavu, um, which is a uh, rose bred um, in Germany and um, imported into the United States fairly recently. So it's, it's a little hard to get, but um, I just, I have two of them. I can't resist her. Um, okay. This is a real sweetie. This is Heaven on Earth, and this is one of those pinks that just appears to have its own light source. Um, it's too bad she's in the shade here. I'll have to think about moving her. Um, oh, this one is um, Flower Girl, and she's named for this because um, she does her bouquets. Well, she grows her own bouquets. Um, that are just the perfect kind of bridal um, white peach, very delicate color and also very fragrant. Um, let's see. 
This is another fairly new one in my garden. Um, this is Lillian Austin. I have wanted Lillian since I saw her. There's a better color here. Um, since I saw her in California at Huntington Gardens. And, oh, there's a bee. Happy bee. Um, focus. Um, and she's another David Austin rose, the ones that are modern but bred to look old fashioned. And uh, she's delightful. Uh, this is a rose I'm growing because she's um, reportedly the most fragrant rose in the world. Um, this is Yolanda Aragon, and she is indeed fragrant and quite lovely. Um, this is a mystery rose. This and, and she's huge. Look how big she is. Um, this a member of the Rose Society said. Um, can I dig up a rose that's in my mother's garden? She's moving. Um, I don't know its name, but I know it's old. Um, I'm actually thinking it might be the same rose as the Shaler's Provence because it grows very much the same way and has very much the same flowers, but that's not an official identification. Okay, here are two showstoppers. Is he beautiful or what? This is... Paul Ecke Jr. and it's a fairly recent rose um, that almost disappeared. It was um, bred. Oh God, look at this. Uh, it was bred for Armstrong Gardens, which is a big nursery in California, and um, they went out of business. And so um, there was some worry that the patent on the rose sort of died with the company, but it's recently become available again, which made me very happy. Um, this is another showstopper. Some of these are past it, let me find. Yeah, here's, here's one. This is another one of my really dark reds. Unfortunately, the phone tends to bleach out the colors. It's almost black um, red. So this is Francis Dubroy, another um, early 20th century rose. Uh, this is another David Austin. You can see why I love his roses. Uh, this is Golden Celebration. This is another Austin, just hard stopping. Um, this is Lady of Shalott and another Happy Bee. And you can see they fade they fade to a creamy apricot, but they bloom this just delicious um, peachy pink. It's a hard color to describe. Oh, here's another one. Yeah. Can you hear the hummingbird in the background? We have a cooper's hawk, and she's trying to scare the cooper's hawk off. Here's another bukavu with a good friend. Um, and uh, yeah, they just look delicious together. Um, oh man, look at that. You are beautiful. Um, this is Mary Rose, another David Austin. Um, this is of, of all of the Austins. I wish you could smell her. Of all of the Austins, um, she does really well in the heat. Oh, look at this one. Um, sorry, lots of aphids again. Ignore them. It is an organic garden. Yeah, that's Mary Rose. This is my namesake, which is Mutabilis. And she blooms this pale, peachy yellow. And then over a number of days, they darken to this lovely cherry pink. And I'm gonna back up. Hopefully the focus will hold. You can see um, the effect is kind of like a bunch of uh, pink and yellow and peach butterflies that have landed on the plant. She she doesn't do well in a vase um, But boy is she a pretty pretty rose in person. Oh, there's this one. She's kind of stuck in the back This is a rose. I just identified called Rosa Nitida um, But she was another um, Rose dug up at an old ranch house. This is, came from my friend Abby's ranch house in Patagonia, and um, it's a survivor. It pretty much um, survives in Patagonia without uh, a 
additional water. So it's a very happy rose. Um, and the, the other thing I love about it is that it, it actually has fall color. The, the color of the leaves is quite beautiful in the fall. Another happy bee. Anyway, so this is one of my favorite views to take a picture from. And because it kind of looks down the long alley of roses toward the pergola. Um, and yeah, man. It's beautiful. Um, we've looked at these already, but this is just coming down the other side. Um, some of these aren't blooming yet, so still joy to come. Um, this is one of my very favorite roses. This is William Shakespeare 2000, and it looks small now, but this will turn into this saucer-sized uh, flower. Um, and that that just smells incredible and this is another david austin rose so, um, so there's another view back looking at that bed this is a tree i bought that hasn't been planted yet uh, another view of yolande d'aragon and now we're in the shade again so i hope you enjoyed that kathy that's a morning in the garden. Bye. Love you.